Hello, welcome to my tech farm. I have another CD scanner for the review, and this is Ainstar by the Shining 3D. This is an affordable handheld uh, CD scanner, and uh, it is equipped with uh, three infrared uh, projectors, uh, two stereo depth cameras, and one RGB camera. So Ainstar can capture clear scan data even outdoors. It is comfortable even for the eyes and easy to scan the hair, so it is great for scanning a face. Well, I hope I can test it maybe with my daughter because I cannot really check uh, is it uh, good for the scanning the hair. The point distance is between 0.1 and 3 millimeters, depend on how much data we want to scan and depend on the size of the object, of course. And effective working distance is between 0.16 and 1.4 meters and optimal is approximately 0.4 meters and on this optimal distance the maximum uh, field of view is 434 by 379 millimeters this is quite big field of view uh, with this we can have enough uh, data for the aligning of the images because uh, aligning modes can be featured properly with this geometry with other scanners uh, texture alignment, hybrid alignment, and uh, global markers. It can be used with XSTAR software, and I already heard that uh, this is great software, but of course this will be tested in this video too. I think the biggest downside of this scanner and the software is that it requires a really strong uh, computer. Uh, so here you can see some minimum and uh, recommended requirements, so it requires a really strong uh, GPU because uh, those other scanners for handheld scanning I tested on this channel they can even work uh, even with a smartphone with the application well this one no it really requires a very strong computer and actually this was one of the first question of Shining 3D if I have a computer which can uh, run this software and the scanner well anyway uh, let's see what's in the box and then it's time to test the scanner everything is nicely protected inside this case And this was content of the package, very nice case. This is a user manual, power adapter, the output is 12 volts and 5 amperes. And this is the cable to connect with the laptop and this is the main unit. I can see there is some fan for the ventilation. And here goes the cable. Here I can see three buttons and this is definitely a handheld scanner because I cannot even see the hole for the tripod. Facebook groups can be very useful sometimes. <laughs> there I got the answer that uh, there is actually this hole but it is below this rubber. And now I notice it was here. I have a lot of uh, marking points. Ah, it said calibration board inside. Mm -hmm. Oh, and another hidden case, or what is this? Uh -huh. For the bag. <laughs> so don't forget to check the inside of the bag, there are a lot of hidden parts. Okay, here a small fan. After starting the software, it recognizes that there is no firmware for the scanner, so it is updating now. Here I can see a warning that it requires a calibration, so let's try to do it. This calibration process is very simple, I'm just following the instructions on the screen and it takes about uh, 2 or 3 minutes. I can choose now if I want to scan in portrait mode, but I will test this later. For now I want to do this uh, object scanning. And then I can choose the object size. Medium or large objects uh, are bigger than 200 mm cubic and small objects between 100 and 200 mm cubic. And then I can choose if I want to use the features, that's geometry of the object, or if it has a lot of texture on it, then I can do the texture alignment, or hybrid, this means I can use the features and the markers, or global markers. Maybe you already know him, this is my volunteer from every scanning video. And with smaller scanners I usually scan only the head, but with these handheld scanners I want to scan the whole body. I will show you detailly only this first scanning and uh, I'm starting with the preview and when I'm happy with the brightness and the distance then I can start with the real scanning and uh, this big view angle is very really good, it really uh, follows correctly those uh, frames and in first pass here I'm going uh, around the object holding the scanner in my hand 
and this is one of the features where this software stands out from the others. I can pause the scanning and remove unwanted points and then I can uh, continue with the scanning process. And again I'm uh, pausing the scanning and removing these uh, desk points. And then I want to scan from the bottom so I'm rotating the object. And I can scan the bottom parts which I couldn't scan in previous position. And again I can remove the points. Every time I can see a black holes on the object I can just do a scanning of that part. And same from the other side. And then I noticed on the top of the head it wasn't scanned so I just do quick scanning on that part. And this is the point cloud. And then I can choose uh, one of the methods, uh, so partly watertight or fully watertight. And then it fills all the holes and uh, a really lot of details I can see here. And here you can see without the texture. Because for the printing this is what is important for me. And uh, I'm very happy with this result and this is basically ready for printing. I can import into slicer. Maybe cut a few millimeters on the bottom to get a flat surface and it's ready for printing. Let's see, Let's see if I can scan a shoe and usually some scanners have a problem with this uh, black marker here but uh, I think uh, it is not a problem for the Instar. I will leave the object a little bit above the desk. This part is speeded up 10 times so after the preview I'm starting with the scanning. I'm going around the object holding the scanner in my hand. And then I'm uh, removing unwanted points, the points of this desk. And then I want to scan it from the bottom, so I'm rotating the shoe. And then I can continue with the scanning and uh, the bottom part of the shoe will be scanned too. Removing all of the points. And then I notice that actually uh, on the other side uh, some uh, surfaces are not scanned. So I'm rotating the shoe, so this will be the third position. And one more quick scan. Removing the points and this is the point cloud, looks very good, here you can see without the textures. And then this is the mesh, uh, I think it is called uh, partly watertight. And here I can see some small holes and uh, then I will check the fully watertight uh, version and then it fill all the holes. Only from inside also it tries to fill that big hole, uh, so uh, on that part it doesn't look good, but otherwise this uh, looks uh, fantastic. Even that black logo is scanned too. And here how it looks like without the textures. So only from inside it is not perfect, otherwise we're happy with the results. Now I know that this object is extremely small, far below those 100 mm cubic, so below the recommended minimum size. But I'm curious because I was reading somewhere that if I use it with a turntable and I use some helper objects, maybe I can get some useful scans. Size of this object is 30 by 30 by 70 millimeters approximately. And I'm scanning here approximately one full turn. And after the processing, I'm removing unwanted objects, which are the helper objects. Taking a closer look, I'm not too happy with the results, but basically there is a chance that I can get a better scan too. The problem is not in the scanning of the details, but in the tracking. Maybe I could do some more experiments, but definitely I think we should stick with the recommended minimum size. Another combination of the turntable and handheld scanning. I want to scan this some kind of hour. It is a door support and uh, it don't have too much geometry, but it is rich in texture. So I want to scan it in a textured mode. The scanning and tracking was smooth and from time to time I even hold the scanner in horizontal position because with this I can go lower and then I'm removing unwanted uh, points. Let's see if I can scan it from the bottom using this surface for the start aligning. New position was recognized correctly and just one move in this position and the bottom part was scanned too. And it looks great from any angle. And here how it looks like without the textures. My next scanning will be this dolphin and I use it several times in my scanning reviews and uh, I already checked uh, it is visible even these uh, black surfaces for the instar. 
It is approximately half meters long, so let's see what can we do with it. And I have to try to scan it in one pass because I cannot move it to the side because it will deform, it is too soft. As you can see, I lift it higher, so I place it on the glass. So I will try to get uh, from the bottom as much as possible. This scanning was in a feature mode and approximately I had two rotations here changing the view angle and only I have uh, some holes from the bottom so I'm rotating the object and just uh, one quick pass and uh, it was scanned from the bottom too removing some unwanted points and this looks great from any angle here you can see from different sides from the top only from the bottom I can see some mark there and actually without textures maybe it looks even better And the final test is a scanning a human head. I already tried to scan myself, but it is very hard to get the view from all angles, especially from behind. Uh, my family members uh, don't really want to help me, well, I will try to hire one of them. Their excuse is they don't want to be in, in the video. Well, uh, I will just uh, show the footage from the screen recorder and uh, we will see the result. The scanning will be in the portrait mode features and I'm reducing the point size to 0.4 millimeters to get a little bit more details. And my wife scanned me so she started from my backside going around and here she should go a little bit below my head too. But she didn't. Uh, and then she go on the top of my head and then we notice there is a small hole below my head so in the second pass she covered that holes. And this is the point cloud. This is now the watertight mesh and I'm creating some kind of cutting plane here to get some kind of statue for the printing. And uh, only I'm not too happy how my ears looks like. And uh, below the head, this is probably because of that second pass, so it is much better if uh, everything is done in one pass. And here you can see everything without the textures. And this is again with texture. Next day we did some practicing and uh, we got much nicer results, but of course with his scanning we couldn't test the scanning of the hair. And I also printed this object, it is scaled down to 25% and uh, you already saw my face earlier so you can decide is it a uh, good scanning or not. And uh, maybe I will upload this to the printables if somebody wants to analyze it or play with it. This is printed from Polythera PLA in marble color. And I also scanned my wife too, this is already the watertight mesh, I'm creating some kind of cutting plane here. And uh, I'm quite happy how the hair looks like. Here you can see everything without the textures. Only the front of the face is not really perfectly scanned. Very useful part of this software is measuring the distances. So let's try to measure this desk, uh, which uh, real dimension is 903 millimeters. I placed some helper objects uh, so I can get easier scanning in the feature mode. But even uh, it doesn't have enough geometry uh, and it struggles, it doesn't have enough features to align the frames. So I did the second attempt, but this time in texture mode and this time it was very smooth uh, without any loss of the tracking. The scanning was successful and then I tried to measure two points. One click, the second click, this is the second point and uh, the error is uh, less than a millimeter. Let's try to measure distance between ears on this horse. 118 is the measure distance and in a software well, uh, the error is less than half millimeters. And then distance of these uh, corners on the owl, it was 170 millimeters. And in a software measured was, again, very close, uh, less than 0.1 millimeter is the error. And now the final thoughts. Well, this is a great uh, scanner in this price range for the hair tone scanning. And I really like its big view angle. And it is not so sensitive to the colors like some other scanners I tested on these channels. Now, of course, it cannot scan anything. Uh, it cannot scan know, transparent or shiny objects like this. In this case, I should use some kind of the sp scanning spray on the surface, but not to change its color, but just to reduce the shining of the surface. Now, there is one important thing where it doesn't perform so good like some other competitors, and um, that's the angle of the scanning. I noticed that the surface is scanned only when the scanner is approximately 90 degree angle to that surface. Of course, plus minus maybe 20 or 30 degrees. But if it is under big angle, then the surface is not scanned. I noticed this first time when I scanned this desk and uh, uh, the surface was scanned only when I was near that 90 degree angle. 
Then another thing I noticed uh, when I scanned these uh, flowers, because uh, the color is fine, I'm, it can scan it, but the problem is that it has a lot of surfaces which are under different angles, so this means I have to move the scanner a lot around to get uh, covered as much as possible, but even then I have a lot of holes in this scanning. Of course these holes will be covered by the software, but this is not what I wanted. Because uh, sometimes we cannot approach everywhere. Imagine we have two surfaces like this, and in this case uh, we cannot have the correct position for the scanner to scan the surface with this 90 degree view angle. And third thing where I noticed this problem is behind my ears, when I, my wife scan my head, uh, there is a gap between the head and the ear, and uh, it cannot be scanned correctly. The software filled that gap, but this is again not what I wanted here. The software is great uh, and I, I really like that the possibility that I can pause the scanning, I can do it even with the button on the scanner, and then I can remove the unwanted points. This is very useful, for example, if I want to change the position of the object and I don't want those points to be confusing, for example, part of the desk or the turntable or something like that. Also, it is very useful in the software that uh, we can cut uh, a plane. This is very useful for us if we want to use it in the CD printing to have a nice flat surface to place it on the bed. We can do it in the Prusa Slicer too, of course. Uh, in Cura, I think we had earlier this tool, but somehow it disappeared in 5.0 version. If somebody knows where is it, then please write me down in the comments. And uh, of course, uh, it is very useful in this uh, software that uh, we can do some measurements. This is very useful for the reverse engineering and the accuracy is fantastic. Now downsize uh, of this software, we need very strong uh, PC or computer for this. And uh, so definitely if you want to buy this, first check if your laptop or PC have the specifications, uh, the minimum requirements for the scanning. Also, it is pity that there, there is no possibility to use it with the smartphone or application because it is great for outdoor scanning too, but don't forget you have to bring your computer with you. Overall, I had very positive experience using this uh, scanner and I would like to thanks to Shining 3D for sending it to me. And if you have some additional experience with it, you know, write me a few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy 3D scanning.